One of the first things I'll point out is this is your pump handle right here. So you'll there'll be a, a little icon here with a lock that's open and one here with a lock that's closed. So to unlock it, you just turn to the left or counterclockwise. And then to lock it, you just push down all the way and then clockwise. Currently, this does not have any water in it. There is a recommendation on the website as far as how many times you should pump the handle down, okay? So I'm gonna put this down. So the other thing I wanna show you is there's actually a, a um, bolt here on the top. This is, you can take this out and this again, it's just, it's a pump. Uh, it's your standard pump here. It's got a couple of star screws right here that you can probably take out and get down into the pump itself take this out and then um, there's a plunger there's a shaft here and then a the uh, plunger right here that keeps the pressure kind of probably at a, a rubber device just like any other plunger um, and then there's a spring here that seats it down on this right here now um, be careful with these because if this ever drops um, out of your Jeep or your truck or something like that onto the ground um, these are durable, but they can break when you, especially when you have a lot of water, when you, when these, when these have water in them, they're very heavy. So if this were to like it, land on the ground and impact, um, it would break this. I've done it. So I have an extra one of these for whatever reason. Um, so this is your pump and you just, again, counterclockwise pump and then close it up and seat that and you're good to go okay and this is your carry handle right here you'll also notice that each one of these comes with a, um, a a little label here so they have type jerry can then they have the date this date here is the january the 14th 2021 probably when it was manufactured there's a reference number and a serial number um, and then then a barcode so most of them most of them come with that so on this side you have the tap, and this is the tap attachment outlet. This is where your water comes out right here. So again, there's a couple arrows up here, and you press down, turn, and that opens the valve, and then the water will come out. Again, I don't have any water in here right now. And then to close it, just press down a little bit, and then it's spring-loaded, so it'll pop back up. If you have the shower attachment, the shower attachment will go on right here. There's a little rubber black uh, gasket right here um, and then you just press it in and I'll show you that here in just a second so I want to show you this is the side that has the filter on it and, and uh, while I was talking I could actually hear the the pressure from pumping this even though this has probably just a little bit of water on it there was still enough pressure where I could hear the, the pressure come out so just undo this and be careful too because this here right that's by itself then you have the spout right then there is a charcoal disc this is the charcoal disc that sits in here inside just underneath the spout okay i call it the spout and that's for basically for re reducing the chlorine taste and uh, making making the water palatable so you can actually get um, i think a pack of um, of these carbon filters i do have a pack and they're in the sealed foil um, but i still i'm still using this one and then i'll just put that right there and then there's a gasket don't lose this gasket if you do you can probably go to a hardware store you know and buy another one but there's a gasket that goes around the top of the filter here and so i just basically take that and set that aside so i don't lose it this is the ultra fine filter it has a, a serial number, a barcode, it has a type, a part number. So if you need another one of these, you can order it and you can see that that goes all the way down to the bottom of the jerry can. And um, I'll show you a close up of these little filters, uh, micron, ultra, ultra fine micron filters right there. But I'm gonna put that back in. Then I'm gonna put this gasket round gasket right back on top 
Then I'm going to make sure I have my carbon filter underneath. I'm going to gently pop that back right there. And when you tighten, when you take the cap and you put it down and you tighten, um, just what, what, one thing is this will go clockwise. And as it gets tight, your little spout might turn this way, go that way. So I, what I do is I just take my thumb and hold it. So when I finally get it where I want, as far as it tight, it's pointing straight out. So just get it, and you, you know, you don't have to crank it down super tight. And then I just double check that I don't have this. One, a couple things I've learned being in, in uh, overlanding is that uh, sometimes, you know, when you're using it and you turn it, you forget to, you know, r turn it off. And then what happens is uh, under pressure, as you go to altitude, say you're driving, you know, at sea level, and then you go higher in altitude, um, pressure might build up in your container. And then, um, which has never really affected me, but this could potentially leak. So always make sure that this is closed. And then um, your carry handles right here. And then you have, if you want to jerry rig some way to put um, this uh, jerry can somewhere on your vehicle, they do have some um, holes right here. And again, I keep mine on the inside. Another point I would make um, is that when you're filling this up with water, um, what I do is I don't take this down to a river or anything like that and just, you know, put it in the river. I port the water with some other, like a water bag or something like that. And I take this off over here, um, the, the pump, and then I just, you know, pour the water down. That way you want to keep your spout. You want to keep this area right in here clean. Um, you don't want to expose this to the water that you're getting um, from the river or any, any water source. You want to keep this area clean. And then over here, you just take your water and pop your water in here. And again, remember uh, good mechanics as far as when you lift this, because when this is full, it is heavy. Um, I just take two hands and just hold it right here and just, you know, you, you know I don't use my back. I bend in and use my my proper mechanics and um but anyway let's take uh another look at uh some of the other elements So here we're looking at the filter, and this is on the spout side where the water comes out. And there are those little micro filters, those ultra filters, UF, as they call them, ultra filter for the water. There's the round gasket, and that round gasket, you want to make sure that you don't lose that, okay? And then the filter is, that's the filter right there. It's really long, like I've shown you before. So, yeah. So here is the shower nozzle here. And this adapter right here is the part that goes onto the spout right there. Now, I'll show you here that there is this little button right here when you press the button that opens this little leverage thing here okay so you can see it's there's not a lot to it okay and you push the button and the cylinder opens you slide it into the spout and then you let go of the button and then it basically uh, secures or grabs a hold of the spout up here okay and that little black gasket's going to help seal it. So when you take the little spout here, and one thing that I've learned is that over time, um, this little um, silver part, the little coil part, there's a hose underneath, but the coil basically is just the 
protect the tube underneath and no biggie it, it'll get loose from time to time you can probably uh, super glue it right up here which i haven't done yet um and i just got back on a from an overlanding trip so I'll, I'll most likely i'll do that soon so what you do is just press that I also want to point out that when you put the shower nozzle on, you'll see that the, there's a couple of little, these little blades here. There's one here and there's one here right there. So when you put that nozzle on and you're putting it, let me grab it here. So when you're taking this shower nozzle and you're putting it on, you want this, ba this base right here, you want this to go all the way up and be seated up against this right here okay one of the reasons that that they put these in built these on to the little sprout here is because uh it keeps it from hitting the nozzle up here so you just basically you take push in the button and then you just pop it in there and i'm doing this with one hand so i'm gonna yeah okay there you go see see how that right there it's gonna sit right up against that okay and then again i'm gonna crazy glue this guy right here it's, it's loose but that's okay it's totally functional even with that loose so yeah and then there's your there's your sh your uh, setup right there that's how you connect it so your shower is connected Okay, and I'm, I'll just squirt the water right down here. So you're going to have air coming out first. And then you'll have a steady stream of water. And I only have a, like a quarter amount of water in there right now. So I'm just going to pump it up a little bit more. There's only, there's not, probably about a, probably about two, two gallons, maybe. But yeah, so you got a nice steady stream. And if need be, somebody else could pump it or you can just pump it, you know, and then, yeah, so that, that works really well. Still cranking. Has a nice pour out. And you know, like, I'd do this, get my head wet, stop, put the soap on, and then later on, just open it back up again rinse the soap off, the shampoo, or the, you know, the, the camp suds off. And then, you know, you don't have this on the whole time because water is valuable. To show you how I set it up in my Jeep, um, I just, I put it in the back on the right hand side or the passenger side, and then I get a river strap. And then that strap, this river strap goes behind the bead pillar in the back. And then I just strap it down and then I take a bungee and you just put that down and across, and then that goes on this little uh, eye bolt down there. That's in my goose gear system, and uh, this stays actually pretty solid right up against there. So I'll close the top and close this, and even my table right here clears the lifesaver. Well, I hope um, that uh, gave you guys uh, some good information about the Lifesaver Jerry Can. And I just want to add some additional information that I gleaned from the website. So again, um, they call the, the spout the tap. And then the, the tap attachment outlet, that's where we put the um, shower adapter um, onto. I just call it the spout. Um, then there's the replaceable cartridge. And that is the cartridge, which is, I've talked about before, which is underneath the tap. And then you have, of course, the, the carry handle. And then the storage capacity of this 
um, jerry can, the Lifesaver jerry can. It's 18.5 liters or 4.9 gallons. It has a flow rate of four liters per minute. And it has also a pump handle, which we talked about. And that has a removable pump. Um, if you ever break it or anything like that, you can always take it apart or you can buy a new one. The dimensions of the um, jerry can is 14 inches by seven inches by 20 inches. It weighs 9.5 pounds empty. And it has a, um, excuse me for reading this off because I don't want to, I do not want to get my facts wrong. So the, you can use it for camping, overlanding, or you can use it at home as a uh, uh, emergency, you know, like shelf uh, water supply system. You get a pack that's uh, heat sealed in aluminum for a shelf life of 10 years. Um, the water filter is capable of filtering 20,000 liters or 5,300 U.S. gallons. It removes viruses, bacteria, cysts, parasites incidentally, activated carbon filters, that round disc that I talked about that's underneath the tap, the spout. That improves the palatability of the water by removing chlorine taste and also the odor. Um, it has a robust uh, construction, and I proved that. I dropped it and banged it and did all kinds of stuff, and it's still going strong. Um, the Lifesaver Jerry Can is a, a microbiological water filter that uses ultra filtration technology. And I'm reading this straight off their website. Its technology filters out bacteria to a minimum of log six, which is 99.9999%, viruses to a minimum of log four, 99.99%, cysts to a minimum of log three, which is 99.9%. .9 it exceeds the NSF P248 compliance standards and protozoan cysts, um, which is demonstrated um, by the U.S. Army Public Health Center MedCom. So um, I have had mine for a couple of years now. It's worked great. I keep it at the back of my Jeep. Um, I've never had any problems with it. Um, I've dropped it once on its head and busted the uh, tap and I bought a new tap. But at the same time, I bought uh, a little foil pack of the um, the charcoal uh, little disc. And so they come in a vacuum container. So I have those. I've got a new tap if I need it. And also bought a pump just in case um, I broke something or something malfunctioned. But I've, I've been using it and, and uh, putting it to the steps and banging it up and everything like that. So... Um, it's a great water container. Um, you can use it in, you know, the outback you know, when you're overlanding or whatever. Um, people use it worldwide. Um, it, again, it is a lifesaver. Um, just remember that, um, you want to keep the tap away from the water that you're gathering. Um, what I do again is I just get like a, a water bag or I, I get at a container and go down to the river or the whatever the water source is. And then I come back and I put it in through the pump um, um, opening and then seal it up. Um, but otherwise, be careful when you're lifting it or when you're you know taking it um, off your Jeep or your vehicle and stuff like that. Um, don't, uh, don't break your back. It, it, it can weigh a lot when you have it totally filled up to 4.9 gallons. So I hope this video helped out. And if it did, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. And I thank you for watching.